A common argument against using preprocessors, whether that might be SAS or LESS or CoffeeScript, is that they add too much complexity. And honestly, I think this is a bit of a silly argument. Especially today, it's easier than ever to take advantage of these tools. Sure, it's not quite as easy as just creating a .css file and having fun, but even a couple hours worth of research should make this as easy as humanly possible. So in this lesson, we'll take a look at one of the tools that I most prefer, and that is called Guard. Now, Guard is built in Ruby, but it doesn't have to be used for Ruby or Rails applications. It's simply a tool that monitors your file system. So I can say, well, when this file is saved, I want you to reload the browser, or compile my SAS, or compile the coffee script, or concatenate all of these files. All of that can be done with Guard, really with very little code. So let's start from scratch and install all of it. The only prerequisite will be that you need to have Ruby and Ruby Gems available on your system. If you're on a Mac, you should have this out of the box. And for Windows users, I'm told that rubyinstaller.org is the easiest solution. So once you have that installed, you're all set to go. To begin, I have a new empty project, and we're going to install Guard, of course. Gem install Guard. Now, Guard is the tool that will monitor your file system, but then there's a big plugin ecosystem as well. So you can get Guard PHP Unit, Guard SAS, Guard CoffeeScript, Guard Concat, all of these various Guard plugins that you can pull in individually. So let's start with the basics. We want to compile SAS. So I'm going to install the Guard SAS plugin. And that's it. So if we want to start a new project, I can run Guard init. Now what this is going to do is create a new guard file. So if I view this project in Sublime, you can see, yep, there's our guard file. And because we only have one plugin installed, this is the only thing that renders. But if you installed guard coffee script as well, when you run guard init, it's going to create a guard sass as well as a guard coffee script within your guard file. But let's keep it simple for now. Here it says, okay, here's our sass plugin. And the input directory is going to be sass and the output directory is CSS. And really, this is all it takes. So if I create a new folder called SAS, create a new file maybe for buttons, and we'll say button background is blue. Now, when I save that, nope, nothing's going to happen. And that's because Guard isn't magical. We have to tell it when to begin watching files. So we can do that by running Guard. And that's it. Now, if this is the first time you run Guard, like it is here for me, you may be told that you have some dependencies to install. And in this case, it wants me to install the RBFS event gem. So I will go ahead and do that right now. Gem install. Give that just a few seconds, and now we should be good to go. Run guard again, and now it's watching. Great. So I can switch out, and if I return to buttons.sass and save again, instantly you'll see that it creates the CSS directory and compiles it down. So overall, including the installation, we did this in a moment or two. And for future projects, of course, you don't have to reinstall those. You would simply create the new project, type guard init. If you need to update the directories, you can do that right here. Otherwise, it'll just work out of the box. Let's add one more. Border, one pix, solid, black. Save. You'll see that that automatically updates. If I want to use variables, of course, that will work as well. BG equals blue. Terrible variable name, but just to give you an example, save it, and now I come back and that's still working. So with very little work, we have SAS compilation. Let's do another one for CoffeeScript. Now within Guard, I can type exit or simply E to escape out. And now I'm going to gem install Guard CoffeeScript. And now if I do Guard init CoffeeScript, or for a brand new project, I would just type Guard init. But if I hit enter, now you can see if I return to my guard file, it's added this new one. So here we see guard coffee script and the input directory. This is going to be where are your coffee files stored. Let's just create maybe a directory called coffee. And I will add one more for output and let's just say JS. So now let's try it out. Coffee. And within it, we'll just create a simple one, main.coffee. And we'll say name equals Joe alert name, just something to prove that the syntax works. So once again, let's make sure we are running guard. And again, what that's going to do is start monitoring your files for changes. So once again, save the file and it immediately creates the JavaScript. And now we have CoffeeScript compiling. And again, that process took 30 seconds. So really this is as easy as it can possibly get. 
as long as you are mildly comfortable with running a few commands. While we're here though, let's do just maybe a little bit more. What about live reloading? That's automatically injecting styles into the browser as you're coding so that you don't have to refresh the browser. Well, that's an easy one as well. To demonstrate this though, I'm gonna need just a little index.html file, and I will paste in just a little bit of starter code and write, hello world. So now to have live reload functionality, once again, we're simply going to install the guard plugin. Gem install guard live reload. Now that this is installed, the only other thing you need, and this is going to be true for any live reload implementation, is to install the necessary browser extension. Here on this page, which I will link to in the show notes, you can see we have a list of just a few extensions for Safari, Chrome, and Firefox. Now I happen to already have this set up, but if I didn't, I would just install it from the Chrome store. And again, here you can see that's already been added to Chrome, but if not, you can do that yourself. The only other thing you want to do is make sure that it has permission to access your file system. So I would scroll down and make sure that allow access to file URLs is checked. Again, if you're using any live reload implementation, this is going to be true. But with that, we can now take advantage of this. So notice if I go back to my guard file, we don't have a guard live reload just yet. And that's because we need to do guard init live reload. Or just to give you a quick example, when you're starting a new project, you would just do guard init and it would create all of those for you. It's gonna filter through all of the plugins that you have installed here. In this case though, I'm going to replace it with what we had before. And one more time, only initialize the live reload. So here you can see it's going to give you some sample files to watch. Again, this is just a bit of Ruby. Don't let it overwhelm you. You don't even need to know how to use Ruby to edit this. A lot of it will just be self-explanatory. And again, most of this is just regular expressions. Let's get rid of all of this. And instead, we're going to take a look at any file that ends with ERB. Let's just get rid of all of that and say CSS or HTML or JS. So anytime a file that ends with a common extension is updated, then guard is going to send the necessary command to reload the browser. All right, so let's save that. I'm going to run guard so it starts monitoring the files again. And now if I switch over to Chrome and I reload the browser, I wanna make sure I enable the live reload plugin. So I will click it right there and you'll see that it has a black dot in the middle. All right, so let's try this out. I'm going to minimize this just a touch, bring it over to the side, there we go. And now watch if I change this. It'll immediately update in the browser. So maybe we will also add a style sheet. We'll call it main.css, but I wanna use sass here. So within my sass file, create a new file, main.sass, body, just something to show that it is working. If I switch to the CSS file, you'll see that has compiled down, and it looks like I just need to make sure my style sheet reference is correct. But now I can edit my sass file, change it to green, that's going to compile down to regular CSS. Guard is then going to detect that the CSS file has changed and then use the live reload plugin to update the browser. And of course, the same thing for CoffeeScript. So if I wanna do maybe JS slash sample.js, let's go ahead and add a coffee file or let's just stick with main.js. And now you can see the browser updates with that as well. So really, it's not that difficult. If you think it's too complex to take advantage of these tools, you are absolutely mistaken. The final thing I wanna do is maybe have some way to concatenate our JavaScript files and maybe even minify them. Let's see how we might go about doing that. We will exit out of guard, and now I will gem install guard concat, as well as gem install guard uglify, and that will take care of minification for us. So let's begin with concat, guard init concat, and that will give us just a bit of boilerplate. I'll go ahead and return this to full screen. And now notice right here. So what we see is we can specify the type. Are we concatenating CSS or JavaScript? We give it an array of files. Then we specify what the input directory is and the output directory. Now for this demo, let's just stick with concatenating JavaScript. So here we can specify the type is JS. The files will be maybe main, and then we will have a module.js file. Let's go ahead and create that while we are thinking about it. Coffee, module.coffee. And here I'll simply do class mod, just some kind of syntax to show that it works. And of course I wanna make sure that guard is monitoring files whenever I'm coding. 
So now if I save the file, you'll see it does in fact compile down to module.js, good. So now that we have two things to work with, it's going to concatenate them in the order that I specify. The input directory is going to be JS and the output is going to be JS slash all.js and we can leave off the extension. All right, so let's try it. I'm going to save edit module.coffee and now you'll see if I return that we do have this new all.js file. And notice that it pulled in main.js and then the module.coffee. However, I'd also like to minify this as well. And that's where we're going to take advantage of the uglify guard. So let's exit out, guard init uglify. And while I'm here, I'm gonna restart guard. So now if I return to my guard file, you'll see that we have a new one, guard uglify. And here we're just going to make sure that the destination file and the file to watch are js slash all. So let's do that right now, js slash all. Now this particular plugin does want the extension, so that is a little bit tricky. But other than that, we're going to watch, and we don't require a regular expression here, so I can just specify the path to all.js, and that's it. So now, once again, let's go and change this to module, save it. It's going to concatenate them, and then it's gonna minify all of that down for you. And again, we're installing these plugins in five seconds. It's really incredibly simple. So that's the bulk of what I wanted to show you today. Let's finish up this lesson by starting over and seeing how quickly we can get set up again now that we have these installed. So I will simply remove everything within my project. If I list the files, it's all back to empty. All right, so we're going to begin. Let's make sure I create a SAS directory and create a coffee directory. And then I'm going to initialize guard and start up guard. Now, if I switch back, it will create our sample guard file. Let's go ahead and get rid of a couple of these. We're not going to worry about live reload in this case or concatenation, but I do want to take advantage of SAS and coffee. So we'll keep it really simple there. The input, as we've learned, is going to be coffee. And I'm going to add the output is JS. And then for SAS, these defaults are going to be okay for me. So now let's just create a file, SAS buttons.sass, button, background is red, save it. That will automatically create the file. So now we have SAS compilation. And then of course, coffee slash module dot coffee, class my module, save it. That's going to compile down, and now we have CoffeeScript. So we're doing this in a matter of 30 seconds. So hopefully this proves that there's really no excuse not to be using these tools if your argument is that they're too complex or they take too much time to get started with. That's simply not the case.